Good afternoon and uh, welcome to today's uh, Mind the Chat. As you know, we are in uh, our process uh, towards the Scala Summit that we will organize digitally due to uh, COVID-19 times uh, in Israel, in Tel Aviv, uh, in a couple of weeks. And so let me briefly explain you what we are about to. So, as you know, we were used to organize a four scale up summit per year with the goal of bringing together uh, international cooperation and scale ups with a single uh, goal to make business, initiate collaboration that may even uh, either turn into uh, commercial collaboration, investments, or sometimes eventually acquisitions. And this is also the goal of the former scale up summit that we launched uh, over two years ago. And we're typically to use in uh, the main stock exchange across the world, Europe, US, and Israel. Uh, with COVID-19, we were forced to slightly reshape our format and to turn into digital. But since we are no longer have uh, the, the constraints of being in the same place for a limited period of time, we decided to, to extend the format. And now, as you might see, is, uh, is over one month of activities. And so we will have uh, a formal summit opening on June the 23rd, uh, when we will just uh, kick off the summit in a two hours uh, time window. And we will also present uh, our new research. And by the way, we'll have also the opportunity to hear from uh, the Director General of um, DG Research and Innovation, uh, Jean-Marie Paquet. Then we'll have the core of our uh, summit will be on June 25 and 26, and it will be the one-to-one -one matching part. So while well, corporates will make the, a selection of uh, Israeli uh, scale-ups that will be selected specifically for them. And then beyond having some dedicated uh, preparation session for either for corporates and startups, 
uh, we also decided to to, to bring to a broader audience part of the concept typically were happening during uh, the summits that is typically organized closed door. And the force of them are what we call the innovation executive views. Substantially, we ask, uh, and actually we are asking uh, the chief innovation officer, the chief executive officer of our corporate members to uh, introduce themselves and to explain what are their specific approach to innovation. And this is what you can see in this, in this image. This is the innovation executive views that we have um, presented, um, uh, that we organized in the, in, the past, uh, in the past weeks. So we have uh, some uh, chief executive, chief innovation, introducing what they do and specifically what are their approach to innovation, their approach to open innovation, and specifically what they are looking in terms of innovation contribution from startups. This also help uh, uh, a lot our participating uh, skills to understand what kind of, what our corporate partners are looking for in terms of innovation. And since we are, we were supposed to, to travel to ISL and one of the goals was also to, to explain uh, what are the specific characteristics of the Israel ecosystem, we decided to organize uh, what we call some deep dives into Israel ecosystem. We started last week with Nathalie Refua. Nathalie Refua is the partner of Viola Growth, that is one of the largest uh, investment group in Israel. And we will have uh, Aaron Aaron, that is the chief executive officer of the Israeli Innovation Authority. And today we have uh, the pleasure and uh, the, the opportunity to, to spend uh, one hour time uh, with our today guest. Our today guest uh, is Zev Olsman. Zev Olsman is, uh, is difficult to introduce in a few words. Let me try to do so. And uh, first of all, he is, is a veteran investor. Uh, in 1993, he founded and launched uh, Giza Venture, that is uh, one of the largest um, VC fund into Israel. Currently, they have about uh, their fifth fund. They currently have 600 million under management. And then uh, Zev will definitely provide more, more details into that. Anyway, is a person that has been one of the, the pillar of the Israeli uh, investment landscape. Then uh, Zev is also the, the founder and the chairman of uh, IBC. And IBC is probably the most complete uh, data uh, base of uh, the Israeli innovation uh, ecosystem. And so we also provide us this double, double perspective. And, and by the way, with also their contribution, we are working on uh, our latest report that we'll discuss later on. Anyway, welcome, Zev, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much for the opportunity, you know, to have this type of uh, dialogue. And I hope also that uh, Mind the Bridge or all your activities globally and specifically related to Israel will be very successful and very productive. Thank you. Going, going forward. Yeah, it's a difficult time, but again, uh, at the end, uh, one of the main... Uh, data points that we are collecting is that uh, good companies are not uh, slowing down uh, when uh, talking about innovation because innovation is the future and then if they do something like that i think it would be suicidal and so they are holding off some unnecessary expenses but the good ones are not holding off um, anything related to innovation and so they are continuing to looking at uh, Collaboration, investment, acquisition opportunity, and obviously when we're talking about innovation, startups, scale-ups, uh, Israel is one of the at least two places to be. The other one is Silicon Valley, when we have headquarters, but the other one is Israel. And again, uh, who best than you is ever to, to help us to, to navigate through the Israeli ecosystem. And so I will uh, my first question for you, Zev, is uh, again, you have uh, have been part of this ecosystem since over for over the last 30 years and so help us to in a few words to to capture what is very very specific of israel basically if you look at the history of the of the israeli venture capital uh, 
1992-1993, you had in Israel uh, only uh, one venture capital fund active. And uh, definitely, you know, the situation uh, today, after almost uh, 25 years of activities, 30 years of activities, it's a totally very successful uh, uh, story. Uh, definitely, the government, we are going to speak uh, about it, uh, had, you know, a very substantial role in the beginning based on the Ozma plan. And if you look at the numbers today, I mean, uh, last year, uh, 2019, was one of the best years, if not the best year, you know, for the Israeli uh, venture capital uh, sector, venture capital industry. You had altogether more than $10 billion investment in the startups, early stage and late stage. You have total uh, exits of uh, more than $22 billion, which is a very substantial uh, number. And you have the number of uh, international uh, strategic uh, global uh, companies, corporations active in the Israeli market in all kinds of activities as uh, 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 almost 400 uh, of them from the United States, from Europe, or from, uh, from Asia. And I would say, you know, that uh, typically one of the best uh, characteristics of the, of the or nature of the industry in Israel is based on the, on the human factor, the entrepreneurship uh, approach of the Israelis, where you can use the word chutzpah, which means you're not trying to do everything or uh, to try, you know, to break uh, any specific uh, rules, especially on disruptive uh, innovation. <coughs> so uh, uh, this human factor, uh, which uh, is coming, you know, from, uh, from the academic institution, from the from being serving in military service in special intelligence units, uh, from being exposed to global activities, I would say is definitely one, one of the major important factors. And uh, if, uh, if you are today, you, we need to, to identify what are the two, three things that are really unique for Israel compared to, to other ecosystem? What what will, what would you mention again? What is why you, Israel is different? Again, strengths and weaknesses at the same time. So what makes you unique? I would say you know that uh, basically is uh, most of when you talk about venture capital in Israel, you have to talk about innovative technology. It's not uh, like sometimes you can hear about venture capital in. Uh, in Europe, even in China, with venture capital is also related, you know, to, to retail uh, chains or some other uh, service uh, activities. In Israel, basically, it's innovative, uh, uh, it's innovative uh, technology, number one. Number two, if you look at the industry today compared to what it was in the beginning, everyone used to, to use the term of uh, startup nation. But today, the, actually, the characteristic is scale-up nation. Yeah. Namely, the Israeli companies wants to become larger, to be bigger, to stay longer period of time, to have established themselves independently, and to lead some uh, global activities, global sectors. So scale-up nation is, is definitely, typically, the current uh, trend you know, in the Israeli uh, industry. On the weakness side, you can say, you know, that usually Israelis are very known, quite known in the R&D, in the development, in the product development, in the technology development. And in the past, basically, they were not used to be very successful on the marketing side. Uh, so, but uh, definitely uh, marketing is becoming uh, more and more uh, a part of the activities of the Israeli companies. I see that now you have uh, on your slide, the total capital invested in Israel. You see here in 2019, $9.6 billion, uh, 2019. But if you add to this number, which is based also on uh, IBC source. Also yeah, the, your source, yes. Yeah, also the venture lending uh, investment, which is not included as a number, uh, you reach, you know, more than $10 billion in 2019. Of course, the real question is going to be, what is going to happen, you know, the post-corona, what is going to be the impact, but probably we will discuss it uh, later on. And, uh, by the, and if you look globally at the total numbers, I see that uh, uh, you are talking here about more uh, than $263 billion. 
So I would say that Israel is about uh, uh, 4%, 4.5%, 5% the total global uh, investment. But it, has to, it, it, it needs uh, to be mentioned that uh, venture capital in Israel is basically innovative technology, disruptive technology, uh, uh, compared you know, to the other activities you know, in other places. So the $10 billion in Israel is focused on the innovation technology. We have a strong technological uh, focus and approach. That is probably yes. the, the main, uh, the main dis distinction. And and this, is why, this is why, you know, it's very attractive to the large leading uh, strategic corporation all around the world, which are looking, you know, for, for new technologies, for new products, for the three, four, seven years, you know, uh, going forward. And this is why you can see here almost all the leading players on the Israeli market. Yeah, and by the way, just uh, we are about publish also with your contribution uh, our updated uh, research and it will be go out on June 23rd. And uh, the goal of this research, and by the way, we, we run the same similar research also in, uh, in Silicon Valley, is to uh, specifically map all the corporates from all over the world that have an innovation presence in Israel and try to specifically understand what they, what they are up to in Israel. Some of them as uh, a present that is just a single antenna to, to understanding what is happening around. Some other have a more structural innovation lab. Some other have a, an R&D center. Some other have a CBC presence. So, and that for us is, is, is crucial to understand also what our corporates are looking at. We're talking about, as you say, over 400 corporates that have a, a, a boots on the ground. And then specifically we map it that have about 160, 170 corporates that have a dedicated team uh, in, in place to scout for innovation. So this is definitely uh, one of the differentiator that uh, as Israel, and this is pretty similar to what we see in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley, we have just to give you a reference, uh, approximately 250 companies from all over the world as innovation presence. So pretty similar, despite the size of the ecosystem is not exactly the same. Uh, Silicon Valley is definitely large, but the focus on uh, technologies makes uh, very, very attractive is, uh, for, for these innovation hunters that are corporates. And uh, talking about corporates in Israel, um, how, they do, how do they work uh, with investors? How do they work with startups? What's your feeling? I mean, first, I mean, they, uh, they are very active, you know, in the Israeli market, and it's a multifunction type of activities. Some of them have only R&D centers. Uh, some of them have uh, both manufacturing uh, activities, R&D centers, and uh, sales offices, uh, uh, different functions uh, under the same, uh, the same corporation. Some of them have uh, all, the, all the bar, as I mentioned, and on top of it, they have CBC, corporate venture capital arms. Uh, they are very active uh, uh, in the market. Uh, some of them are investing directly in startups. Some of them are investing all in startups, also in venture capital funds, Israeli venture capital funds, and they use their domestic uh, presence, you know, as part of their joint activities together with their domestic partners. As I said, you have a company, for example, like Intel, which has uh, already more than 15,000 people, employees in Israel, uh, on the manufacturing side. On the same uh, on the same token, they have also two or three R and D centers located in a, in a few a few places uh, around uh, around Israel, and you have some others that have only uh, R and D centers, etc. I would say you know that the importance of the corporate uh, activities in the, the global activities in the Israeli market from the Israeli venture capital is very significant. Starting from uh, the early stage, instead, once if you are, if you are an, a founder and entrepreneur and you have an idea, you have a vision, you have the abilities, you have the opportunity to check your vision, your uh, your idea, together with some of the leading companies uh, that are active on the Israeli market. The Israel, the network is relatively small and uh, very tight. And you have the ability to call some of the leading uh, managers of these large corporations that are active on the Israeli market and to check with them <clears throat> if the idea is a valid one, if it makes sense from their point of view to, to develop it and uh, 
actually also to cooperate with them uh, as a beta site, as an alpha site, to check exactly or you know uh, their abilities. And many companies like Microsoft, uh, <coughs> like uh, eBay, like uh, Google, uh, <coughs> like Facebook, they have also some special accelerators, some special activities which enable the Israeli entrepreneurs to work together with them to get some assistance, some help. Later on, when it comes you know, to raising capital, to have investment in the startups, many of the corporations are active in direct investment in some of the startups, which they believe are strategically connected to their activities say, in the future. So as investors, they are also very important. Uh, on top of it, I would say, you know, that uh, when it comes to exits, most of the exits of the Israeli uh, startups of the Israeli companies, at least until recently, came from uh, merger and acquisition. And some of the main uh, acqu acquisitions are coming, you know, from the large corporation, from US, from Europe, sometimes even from uh, Asia, uh, which are interested, you know, to get control of the companies, of the technology, and to incorporate it into their activities. So I would say, you know, that the importance of the of the of the global corporation is key, is crucial to the successful of the Israeli venture capital industry, and hopefully it will continue, because they are the major factor through all the food chain. Uh, just to do a couple of clarification here, I think is super important. Uh, number one is. Uh, it looks like that Israel has uh, cultivated a sort of special relationship with the United States. Again, what we typically see is that uh, probably the largest acquire of uh, Israeli startup and scale-ups are US companies. Again, you mentioned Intel, again, Mobileye, Movit, uh, just two, two recent examples of their appetite for innovation and their presence in the dominance. And the other part is that most of the startups are raising money from Israeli VCs that has US LPs and also they are part of rounds where also US investors are part of them and some of them are certain point uh, evolving what we define as a dual company model meaning that they, they keep R&D in Israel but they open headquarters in the US and some of them also go, go public on the Nasdaq etc. So can you help us to We'll try to understand why there is a special relationship and then uh, some examples of how this does it work. Also from your perspective as an investor, again, we have uh, bring uh, to uh, this adventure many of them down this way and I expect. And so probably you can give us some internal uh, insights into that. Well, I will, I will, as we, uh, we, uh, this, uh, we mentioned, you know, basically earlier, the corporations, the big corporations, are looking for uh, for innovation uh, technology. They all understand. All of them have, have their own their own internal R and D activities, R and D centers, uh, which uh, are developing exactly what they need, what they want, what is their vision. But they reached the conclusion already, you know, a few years ago, that uh, it's not enough. You know, to really, you know, to be on top of it. They need also sometimes uh, some uh, 10 people, 20 people, three people which are sitting, you know, in the cellar are coming with ideas that can be very destructive. And for them, it's very important to, to be on top of it. So they have reached the decision. Almost all the big ones are the main players that they need, you know, to have a, a double approach. Number one, of course, internal R&D. Number two, to get the... Uh, full exposure to what's going on in some specific center where the innovative technology like Israel is a main factor. So this is one of the main reasons actually they, why they came here. Number two, if you look you know, at the Israeli entrepreneurs, the Israeli country, the venture capital basically, the Israeli market is very limited, very small. Total uh, population uh, altogether uh, a little bit more than uh, 9 million people. Domestic market is actually very marginal, even not uh, an alpha site or beta site for an Israeli company. It's not, it's not like, of course, US or China, and even not, not like uh, in Europe, where you have the UK, France, Germany, generally speaking, uh, a very, very sizable uh, market. So the Israeli entrepreneurs need to be very uh, global uh, approach from the beginning, from inception, looking from the relationship 
looking from the connection, you know, to the to the large players. Number three, most of the investors in the Israeli venture capital sector, and this is by the way another characteristic of the Israel, are foreign investors. So I would say, you know, that more than 90, 95% of the total investment in Israeli venture capital sector is coming from foreign investors. Very typical to Israel, not exactly the same in the US or in, in other countries. <clears throat> and uh, even the Israeli venture capital funds, they call it Israeli venture capital funds managed by Israelis, but more than 90%, 95% of the investors in the venture capital funds in the Israeli yeah, ones yes. are foreign investors. So uh, basically, <clears throat> this is the, the relationship, the importance of the four of the of the global companies, the global corporation is key in Israel, and it's a win-win situation for the Israeli entrepreneurs and also for the big corporation. Yeah, again, uh, you are proving double value. You are proving value either as a producer of innovation and also as an investor into innovation. The fact that you have 95% uh, of your LPs are not local, meaning that also they don't just appreciate uh, the products the Israeli will put together the technology, but also the screen that you as an investor are able to to apply in identifying the best one. So it's a double trust, I would say. And that's I, might, I might add maybe also on your question, you know, that the U.S. investors or the relationship between Israel and U.S. are very developed, very developed, uh, the, the affiliations or uh, the feeling, I mean, the U.S. investors are... Uh, are among the first ones that have ma that made their presence in Israel. Motorola, for example, started to be in Israel almost uh, uh, more than 40, 50 years ago. Uh, some of the exits, the uh, IPO, public, uh, public uh, offering, you know, in the U.S., capital raising in the U.S. was a natural process for Israel. So definitely, you know, uh, you, I would say, you know, in numbers that more than 50, 60 percent of the total investment in the Israeli uh, venture capital industry is coming from the U.S. from uh, from various uh, players like uh, uh, leading institutional uh, investors. Uh, even in our fund, we have uh, in the past some investors like Calsters, like Calpers, the New York Common. Uh, but also, you know, <coughs> some uh, some leading uh, corporation, leading strategical corporation, which are investing, as we say, directly in companies sometimes like Intel, which has Intel Capital very active. I mentioned Intel because it's a very good example, but they are not the only one. Many uh, CBC, many uh, uh, corporate investment investors are quite active, as we said before, on the Israeli market. But US is leading, Europe, I would say, is number two, and then you have Asia also. Yeah, let's, uh, let's focus a bit about, this is a quite uh, timely and interesting topic, is the, the role of China, and you know, China, as, a, as I can understand, has a growing presence in, uh, in Israel. And now with the US-China tense situation that is uh, materializing, how that might change the picture? What are your, your, your okay. perspective here? This is a quite interesting uh, topic. I know, yeah. that's why I yeah. ask. <laughs> Everyone is talking about the, the war, the commercial war, or the economic war between the uh, uh, U.S. and China. Uh, two, three weeks ago, the uh, foreign minister of the uh, U.S., uh, Mr. Pompeo, came to Israel, and actually one of the topics was how to avoid, you know, increasing the Chinese uh, investment or influence uh, on Israel. As we know, you know, Trump... Uh, is leading, you know, this war. This is basically a war on supremacy, on uh, who is going to be the, the number one technology uh, uh, power going forward. Uh, and the technology uh, supremacy is quite important. Uh, 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 so this is basically a, a, an important topic. But if you look uh, specifically at the numbers and uh, the investment, and uh, we looked at it at, uh, also at IBC in the last uh, five years, the actual investment of Chinese investors in Israel is relatively very small, even I would say marginal. It's less than 5% of the total investment annually. 
number of exits, you know, or acquisition by Chinese players in the Israeli market in the last uh, five years was about six. Uh, total uh, amount, there was a total, uh, a total uh, acquisition by uh, foreign investors in the last five years, I believe, uh, were uh, more than 50, 60 billion dollars. Only six billion dollars, less than 10 percent Chinese. And out of this six billion dollars, one company, Platica, it's a gaming company, 4.4 billion dollars. So the point that I want to say, you know, that the noise about it, at least on the technology sector, the impact and the effect of the <clears throat> of the Chinese investors is very marginal. On top of it, definitely uh, Israel following the, I would say, I don't want to say the pressure, let's say the request from the U.S. Uh, have established, you know, a special committee headed, you know, by uh, near the prime minister office to search and to look into any specific investment by Chinese uh, investors, you know, in the Israeli market. So on the technology sector, on the venture capital sector, the war between uh, U.S. and China or the impact on the Israeli venture capital is uh, actually practically is very marginal, not very important. Of course, I'm not talking about infrastructure projects like uh, railway, like ports, where the Chinese involvement or the Chinese activities, the road belt uh, pro, uh, uh, process, a uh, project, is totally a different story. So I would say, you know, that uh, I don't see any real uh, negative uh, impact on uh, on the venture capital on the on the startup uh, 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 sector, you know, in the Israeli market. On the other side, you can argue, you know, that the Chinese market is a huge market and the Israeli technology sector, large companies that wants to become bigger, cannot avoid looking at the Chinese market. So it's not, a, it's a sensitive situation, not a margin, the marginal impact, you know, the early stage startup companies, but still we'll have to see how Israel can uh, cope with it later on. Okay, now I think, uh, I think you make a very, very, good uh, holistic approach and give us the, the right uh, data point to, to understand the, the magnitude of this because it's something that has been uh, on the news again as you mentioned has been something that again the, the the trade war between us and china is is also as a technological component as far as i can understand the technology and contribution from Israel currently is not particularly relevant, but uh, again, but also it is a sensitive topic to, to be monitored probably down the way. Yeah. Uh, next uh, question is, and I think it was one of the, the questions that I wanted to ask you is uh, the role of government uh, in Israel and its impact on the, the evolution of the uh, tech uh, Israeli landscape. Again, uh, Yofma, I think, has been probably the trigger. Can you help us, again, since, again, you've been following it since, since the beginning, can you help us to, to give us the right perspective to understand the role of the government? What are the pros of the of strong governmental influence? What are the, the cons, if any? Can you give us some, your, your um, takeaways over here? Okay, as I, as I mentioned before, 1993 in Israel, we had only one uh, venture capital fund active, uh, which was actually headed by Fred Adler, who was a leading, you know, uh, US venture capitalist, a very famous one, well known at, uh, at his time, a leading one. And uh, then the government by, uh, uh, decided, you know, to activate what they called the Yozma program, Yozma is initiative in Hebrew. And the idea was, you know, to try to create <clears throat> nine, ten uh, Israeli venture capital funds, the first uh, venture capital funds in Israel, to invest in them about 40% of the money and to bring also some foreign investors, so foreign uh, management, you know, to those funds. Uh, about nine venture capital funds were established, you know, during this time. And from those uh, venture capital funds established by the Osmar in 1993, 1996, uh, actually, the new uh, venture capital uh, sector emerged in Israel. Some of the venture capital funds like uh, Pitango, like uh, uh, Vertex are still very active uh, in the Israeli market. Some of them after more than 25, 30 years are less uh, active already you know, in, the, in the Israeli market. 
So actually you can say, you know, that this was a very successful program by the government established and new sector in Israel, uh, which is now you can see, you know, the, 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 the fruits of it and the results of it. Now the government was involved actually all the time. There was some uh, uh, in giving basically later on on the infrastructure. I mean, basically they have looked, you know, at, at uh, 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 making the venture capital stronger uh, as an infrastructure project, like transportation, uh, <laughs> like electricity. And uh, basically they provided, you know, the tax, the legal system, the tax system, which enable actually the venture capital investors and the venture capital management and the, and the startups to be active and very successful. And they created, you know, a, a, an incentivized a, a system which assisted, you know, all the startups, you know, to at least, you know, in the beginning of their activities. The office of the chief scientist was very active during this time. And every year they're giving some grants some incentives to investors, to, to startups, to especially grants on R&D projects. So basically this uh, government involvement, I would say very important. Today, the chief scientist office, the new name is actually the Innovation Authority, headed by Aaron Aaron. You mentioned his name, he's going to be interviewed by you later on. And they are crucial, they are doing, they basically are the organization which is in charge on the Israeli government uh, activities, development of the, of the Israeli high-tech sector. And they have uh, many, many projects, many plans, and they are doing uh, uh, very good jobs. I would say also, you know, the government involvement, if you look, for example, at the level, what, what is known, you know, in the industry, some special units in the military and in the intelligence units, like uh, 8,200 and some uh, other special units, which many entrepreneurs, many top technologies came out of it. I mean, many young people are being established, are being exposed to, to basically substantial uh, technology projects, state-of-the-art uh, projects, usually, of course, uh, military-related, but at the end of the day, technology that is used in the, in the military can be used, can be civilized, uh, commercialized and could be active, you know, also, you know, on the commercial life. So indirectly, the level of uh, government activities uh, through the, these activities of those special units have been a very substantial uh, factor, you know, on the development of the Israeli venture capital. Now, so the government uh, involvement and important is a key, was a key factor. Uh, basically, the, their importance is, uh, is a little bit less nowadays because the size of the sector, the independence of the sector is now uh, much, uh, much, uh, much bigger compared to what it was originally. But still, when it comes to some crisis like the Corona crisis, then everyone is looking at the government to see what can they do, how they can they do, etc., etc. Let's let's focus on the coronavirus, uh, COVID nineteen. Um, let's say uh, situation. Uh, first of all, um, how this is uh, impacting Israel? Again, it's difficult to to take any conclusion because again, probably we need to see the numbers of Q two and Q three to really understand uh, if there's been a sort of slowdown. Uh, again. China was looking at the number of Q1. China is probably six months earlier compared to us. And then you see the, the, the slow decline that is impacting Q1 and probably be continuing Q2. So probably we need to see the number of Q2 and Q3 to, to really start assessing the impact of COVID-19 on the tech scene. Uh, but uh, first of all, how Israel has been impacted? Uh, again, as what has been, how long has been the lockdown? Uh, uh, what are the main visible uh, impact of, uh, of COVID-19? This is the first question I wanted to ask you. I mean, definitely Israel is part uh, of the world, and especially, you know, the, the high-tech sector, the venture capital is a global industry, so, so the Israeli sector has been impacted uh, quite substantially, uh, similar, you know, to, to the situation or to the trends or to the development where we see in other places, especially as the uh, Israeli, as we said before, is, uh, is uh, very influenced by US investors, US activities, which are looking at technology, etc. 
Uh, we usually say, you know, that uh, what happened in the U.S. Uh, uh, is happened, you know, in, in uh, the development on the main trends uh, on the technology side or level of investment. After about two quarters in uh, the U.S., you can see it or in Israel. So uh, I would say, you know, that generally speaking, I expect, you know, that the economically the turnaround or the getting out of the corona is going to take at least, to my opinion, until uh, the end of uh, next year. Uh, we are going to see, you know, some uh, 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 reduc reduction in top level of investment, total level of investment in the Israeli market. Especially the impact is going to be, to my opinion, on seed early stage round A type of uh, investment. Uh, where we have seen already, you know, the trend, you know, that uh, most of the investment in the Israeli market, as we said in the beginning, going for scale up uh, nation, you know, for late stage, growth stage type of companies, but still, you know, early stage uh, situation, at the end of the day, this is a pipeline, this is the future. And if we have, if we don't see enough uh, new uh, startups being established or enough capital going into early stage investment, it's going to be a challenge also to the, to the Israeli sector. Uh, I would say, you know, that uh, still, most of the international players in the Israeli market continue to be very active. Uh, Israel has been uh, the startup, the early stage companies, the late stage companies have been adjusted themselves to working online very quickly. Uh, some of them have reduced, you know, their, uh, the number of employees, but uh, the, the good companies, the top companies continue to be very active. Of course, you might see, you know, some uh, longer period of time until exits of some of the companies. Uh, maybe some, uh, some uh, IPOs, companies that have planned IPOs, probably they might delay, you know, their activities later on. On the other side, we have to remember that most of the large leading uh, global companies are sitting on huge amount of cash, hundreds of hundreds of billion of dollars. Uh, so for them, basically, I think they look at it like an opportunity to look at some technologies, some Israeli innovative technology, and maybe to buy them and to purchase them, you know, relatively at a much more reasonable prices compared to what it was, you know, last year. So basically, <clears throat> if we look, you know, at the last two, three months, we, we have seen, you know, some very interesting uh, acquisition, yeah. mainly by leading technology companies like, uh, like Intel, uh, <clears throat> like uh, National Instrument. Uh, uh, so, and I, would, I believe, you know, this will continue, you know, to be the trend in the Israeli market. On the exit side, on the acquisition side, we still are going to see a substantial activities on the Israeli market. On the level of investment, especially early stage, we are going to see some challenges. Some uh, the, 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 it will be harder for companies to raise to raise money. I see, you know, they have, uh, you have here the slide about the Israeli exits from 2017. Yes. This is the largest one, yes. Yeah, but if you look at the right one, uh, move it, which was mm. one billion dollar by Intel. As I said, you know, some of the of the, the leading companies have a lot of money still, and they are still looking, you know, to make a acquisition you know, into, in, in Israel. And this is going to be even uh, an opportunity for them to make some, so, uh, some investment in Israel. Okay. So I have to, to wrap it up your answer on the one end, you're expecting probably on the one end or slowing down, at least in the investment, specifically or seed and early stage. Right. And on the other end, might be an acceleration on the exit sides because, again, uh, difficult times, cheaper valuation, yeah. and probably might be a good uh, good opportunity for doing some shopping into some Israeli good technology. And they have, and they have the money, and they, they also the know it, and they have also, and they, as we say, and they also know Israel very well because most of them have very strong presence in the Israeli market. So for yeah. them, it's not nothing new that they have, you know, to search or to look. They know exactly already to which company to look, etc. So I definitely agree with your uh, conclusion. And uh, what is the, the government take into this COVID-19? What is government is doing for, again, supporting these two, these two trends, again, or for rebalancing these two trends? Okay. Uh, 
I would say, you know, that uh, basically, as I mentioned before, the Israel, uh, the Innovation Authority headed by Aaron Aaron, this is the main organ or the main arm mm -hmm. of the government in charge of the activities. They are working together with the Ministry of Finance, trying, you know, to find to come with some uh, solution to it. Uh, they came uh, with some uh, solution. Personally, I don't think, you know, that the amount of money that the government has been allocated actually to to overcome, you know, the challenges of the problem, especially of the early stage companies, uh, is not enough. Uh, and uh, I am on the I'm uh, quite criticized of, about the government activities, although the the <clears throat> The Innovation Authority are trying to do their best. They came out with some uh, program, you know, to subsidize, you know, the Israeli institutions, you know, to invest uh, in uh, in uh, some uh, in early stage or late stage uh, companies. Total amount is very small, not enough. And uh, and the type of program, namely, you know, that they will uh, participate in losses of some of the institutional Israeli institutional investors. Uh, in the future, after eight years, after 10 years, I think, you know, that this uh, program is not the right one. Government, uh, led by the Innovation Authority, should have uh, actually established a, a new fund managed by the Innovation Authority, a few hundred million dollars to be injected by the government. They can also raise some money from other institutions, foreign and Israeli. As I said before, more than 95% of the total investors in Israel are foreign investors. So why go to the Israeli institution, which are very, very small in their activities? This fund can leverage its activities and actually have special terms, you know, when it comes to investment only directly into startup companies, not into other venture capital funds and uh, not into other institutions. Hopefully, but this uh, proposal actually was rejected by the by the Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. although the Innovation Authority uh, supported it. And they are doing some marginal program, which uh, basically is not uh, is not very helpful uh, to the to the sector. And uh, unfortunately, in, in a Q2, Q3, as you mentioned, we are going to see the impact, the results, the slowdown of the level of investment on the early stage companies in Israel. And the lack of the government involvement uh, is uh, is a pity. Yeah, again, this is a big uh, topic uh, everywhere in the world. Again, uh, and again, if I have to look uh, what the different governments are doing, uh, I, I say that Europe, the US, uh, all the there are all of these all countries that provided some answers, meaning the PPP scheme in the US. Uh, in uh, in Europe, we have some uh, mostly the possibility to put some some people some furlough uh, schemes, uh, some schemes to avoid that they lose uh, employment at least for a temporary period, subsidizing some uh, employment costs, some additional funding. But I think if we need to to look at what it happened, I think uh, yes, each county has done something, but probably each county has done enough to to support the tech. Um, Ecosystem thing. This is my 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 first uh, takeaways, and then probably we will see the results down the way. But if you look at the, at the Israeli at the importance of the Israeli venture capital high tech sector in the economy, you see, you know that the from the employment point of view, the sector employs about ten percent of the total uh, employees. You know, in in Israel, the contribution to the rate of growth of the Israeli GDP is uh, more than uh, 35% every year. And uh, more than 40% of the total export of Israel is yeah, coming that from, is the, amazing, yes. yeah, from the high-tech sector. So if they, you say, you know, that the Israeli government, at least, you know, on the declaration side, is declaring that they have an 80 billion uh, 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 shekels, which is about uh, 25 billion dollars, some kind of injection, you know, to incentivize the government, the employees especially, to come back to work. If you take into consideration that uh, basically most of the investment into startups, especially early stage, is going for salaries, for keeping the employees, keeping, keeping the intellectual property, definitely the government the level of involvement, which is a few hundred million dollars, is not reflecting the importance 
of the Israeli high tech and venture capital uh, sector. But this is what we have. The Ministry of Finance uh, is controlling uh, the budgets. And, the, and the, actually, the innovation authorities is dependent you know, on the budget allocated to it. To, to it. So as I said, I am uh, quite on the opposition side to the government activities, generally speaking, especially to the high tech sector. But this is what we have. And, we, and as we say, this is what we have, and with this we have to win. <laughs> exactly, yeah. because at the end, yeah. complaining uh, yeah. uh, is a right, but it doesn't help. Yeah, uh, I agree with If you. this is the situation right. and this is the scenario, I think is the... But in Israel, you need to complain all the time, otherwise you don't get anything. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Again, we also here in okay. Italy we have a, a strong tradition of complaining, but still. Yeah. But at the end, we don't get anything. Also, if we complain, so that's, that's also, our yeah. problem. <laughs> okay. okay, I think uh, that comes to the end of our conversation. I think, as ever, I really thank you a lot. Again, you give us a lot of insights uh, that um, I think definitely are helping our community that is is supposed to digitally travel to Israel by, by the end of the month, yeah. uh, definitely a, a better grasp and understanding of Israel, the Israel ecosystem, what it's come from, where it comes from, and uh, where it's, uh, it's added. So thank you a lot for your contribution, and um, we'll definitely stay in touch. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And as I said again, good luck you know, in your activities and your uh, coming digital conferences, especially in Israel and also in other places. And also for the research that you are going to, to, get, to get up by the end of this month, especially on the big corporation activities, level of activities, which is very important in Israel. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much, Alberto. Thank you for your contribution. And uh, okay. that's the base soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.